and welcome. This is Mary Ellen McGonigal with your Friday afternoon MEM Edge show. As always, this is the show that brings you where the action is and what took place in the markets last week. We did show some weakness in the broader markets. We'll get into that. I'll share with you where the broader markets closed. And as always, what did drive price action last week? And I'm here to tell you that it was very similar to what we have been experiencing over the past several months. And that is a response to higher interest rates. Interest rates do remain elevated. We'll talk about where the markets were impacted by that. And then also economic news. However, it was rather light last week. I'll share some of that with you as well. And then one of the other primary drivers of stocks that had the biggest moves, both to the upside and the downside, continues to be earnings driven, even though we are at the end of the earnings season. There are still companies that are coming out with numbers, and I will share with you one industry group in particular that has seen some real bright spots in their earnings, and the group overall is holding up well. I'll also share with you some of those stocks. So let's take a look at some of those news items from last week. We did see crude oil prices rise above $90 a barrel. It closed a bit below that, but that certainly was very newsworthy. And that was all about several factors. And first up was that Saudi Arabia is going to continue to reduce their production outlook. The U.S. had a big drawdown in inventory. And those factors combined did push oil prices higher. In turn, the energy sector did outperform. We also did see jobless claims fall. And we didn't see a huge response. That's a weekly number. It came out yesterday, but it does not bode well, certainly for that inflation outlook. And we also did see some shuffling about among the broader sectors and industry groups that I am going to go ahead and get into. So from here, let's go ahead and take a look at the broader markets and see just where did we close the week. And here we are. This is a daily price chart of the S&P 500. I've marked it up to highlight some key areas, certainly resistance and support as we move through the week. The S&P 500 was down almost one and a half percent for the week. And we can see that it did close below this 50-day simple moving average. That's a very key area of support, very widely followed by the broader markets. And we did drift below it. We did have a period momentarily today on Friday where we closed, we were above it. However, we did, as stated, close below that key moving average. And we got some pretty big volume here in the broader market indices, certainly relative to these earlier periods. However, we are in that first week of September, and it is viewed as a period when traders are getting back to their desks. So we may see more by way of volume. However, at this juncture, again, we are below this 50 day. However, we've closed just above this green 10 day simple moving average. So then in turn, that does make that a key area of support. Your first area of upside resistance will be that 50 day, but you can see it's a very, very tight trading range that you're going to want to be aware of. And then beyond, if you pull the lens out, we can take a look at some of these other key areas of possible support. Your first area is going to be these recent lows. However, this 4,300 level is viewed as rather critical in the sense that it was a widely viewed upside resistance longer term area. So if we do happen to close below that 4,300, it would certainly be concerning. Now, from here on that upside, I talked about the 50-day being that first area of upside resistance. And then as we move above that, your next key area is going to be that 4,600 level. On the momentum indicator side, we can see that the RSI just drifted below that net neutral 50. It was not as pronounced as this earlier August pullback. And the stochastics on the S&P 500 are positive. So net net, it was a rather wobbly week but certainly not defining. However, caution is in the air, certainly from my work. And those of you that are going to be seeing my newsletter on Sunday, you will get further 
details there. Now, let's take a look at the key NASDAQ, the top performer year to date. And we can see very similar price action here around that 50-day simple moving average, as well as this shorter term 21-day. We did manage to close above that 21-day simple moving average, however, below that 50. So again, very, very tight trading range here as the markets battle around these key moving averages and then using this low here in mid-August as your potential area of support, your first area, should we see further deterioration. Same with the momentum here, that RSI drifting down into negative territory, stochastics heading lower, but they are still in positive territory. So mixed on the momentum side, however, you can see that we are generally overall experiencing weakness. From here, I do want to take us to those 11 sectors that are underlying within that S&P 500. And it is a two-month daily price chart view of those sectors. And I've sorted it in descending order by that RSI. I'm going to go ahead and update that. And as you can see, I did mention that energy stocks were on the move. The group was up about 1.8%. And certainly relative to other areas of the market, nice uptrend taking place here, nice high volume. We did get that MACD crossover black line up through the red indicating a new uptrend. So certainly that was one bright spot here in the broader markets. Next up, we can see XLC. And this group was flat for the week. You can see not a whole lot taking place here. Flat MACD showing that the momentum has leveled off. And some of the movement here was being held up by Meta and Netflix. They were both up about a half of a percent, but enough to help support this particular sub uh, sector here in the broader markets. Let's take a look at technology. It is did underperform. And that is certainly something new relative to the last couple of weeks here for technology. The group was down almost 2%. So very much in line with the performance of the NASDAQ. Now take note, we are still in a positive position here with that RSI, the MACD on this ETF. You can see that it is still up there in positive territory, but leveling off. So we're not seeing that upside momentum shift that took place last month. Other sectors that I do want to share with you as it relates to momentum potential shifts, we did see consumer discretionary stocks hold in relatively well, down 0.7%. That's relative to the S&P down about 1.5%. We did see Tesla at the end of the week with a 1% rally. Amazon was flat. Those are two certainly big heavyweight names in there. Um, however, very similar to these other areas, you're seeing just this general flatness taking shape here. Not the end, not bad news, but certainly we have shifted out of that nice uptrend high momentum period that we experienced earlier in August. So taking a look at some of these areas down here that have suffered, I do want to share with you this pretty sharp pullback in the industrial XLI sector. It was down 3% for the week. A lot of that having to do with the transports. I believe I have a chart of that coming up next, but it is airlines, truckers. And these are certainly companies that do fare well when the economic outlook is a bit stronger. So we did see a significant pullback. Also aerospace and defense with Boeing leading that group down lower as well. So we have shifted from this near-term uptrend has been lost and industrial stocks are now trending a little bit lower. As we move through, I do want to also take us to a view of underlying ETFs that I find to be super helpful as it relates to staying on top of where the relative strength is relative to the weakness. And as always, it's with an eye toward areas that you could potentially participate in if you are aligned and active trader, and then areas of weakness that you would certainly want to stay away from. So first up here, we did talk about oil and energy stocks. Here's a view of Brent crude oil pricing. You can see the steady progression, and this was 
a continuation from last week's rally, and we end it just under that $90 per barrel pricing. Here we are with that MACD crossover, showing that oil is in a new uptrend. Let's take a look at some other areas that held in where, uh, quite well. This is IGB. It's the technology software sector, ETF, and it really is holding in quite well. This is one of those areas I mentioned to you earlier where earnings are helping drive price action among many of these underlying stocks. And I will share with you some of those names that have reported and are holding up really quite well. So let's go ahead back, take a look at some of these other sectors here. And I did want to highlight one area that uh, we can really use as a way to stay on top of yields and interest rates. And this is that 10-year Treasury yield. Take a look up here at 4.26, so 4.3. And that is quite elevated. Really above that 4% will generally have an impact on the broader markets and most certainly usually in technology and software. So it is a pleasant surprise to see that software stocks are holding in quite well despite a relatively high interest rate environment. Now, one area that did pull back last week and also reverse its down, its uptrend is semiconductors. We're using SOXX and you can see it has now closed below each of these moving averages with now negative momentum. So that is certainly worth noting. From here, let's go ahead and take a look at NVIDIA, certainly a bellwether, well-known semiconductor stock. And you can see this too is also faltering here, pulling back that MACD now in negative territory, actually had a negative crossover. RSI is in negative territory. So let's go ahead and take a look at some of these other sub-industry groupings. And here we are. This is the retail ETF XRT, and it was down quite a bit last week, down over 4%. We can see this pullback here. So retail names are overall suffering. There was one well-known company, and this is typical of what I was speaking of earlier, where companies that announce earnings that are weaker than expected really get punished. This is RH, a big holding certainly of Warren Buffett's, and it was down almost 16% super high volume after releasing earnings. Taking a look at some of these other weak areas, IHI, this is the medical devices ETF and they just cannot get out of their own way. Downtrend reversal attempt last week has faltered and we're continuing to see weakness among those medical device stocks. The reason I point that out is if we take a look at a longer term chart, you can see that when the group gets going, it can really outpace the broader markets. And unfortunately it did peak in price back here at the beginning of the 22 bear and has not been able to get quite close to that prior high. So I think one other area that I did want to certainly share with you here is the small cap Russell 2000. It did have a very strong week last week and it gave most of that back. The group was down 3.6%. Oftentimes when you see movement away from small cap names, it does signal a risk off environment. And also when we are in periods of economic uncertainty, they will falter as well. So that is certainly something of note. Now from here, I do wanna share with you ways that you can put together a watch list. From my work, we're in a period where generally speaking, you will be served best if you keep your powder dry, have a list of stocks that you can really rely on and use when that upside momentum comes back to the broader markets. So we're gonna take a look at a couple of names that are potentially in the throes of reversing their downtrend. Actually, we're gonna take a look at two names that have are in the beginning stages of turning around. Certainly they are watch list noteworthy. And then also take a look at some of these base breakout stocks. There were some last week and look at names that are on the cusp of breaking out. And those would be ideal for any watch list. 
So first up, I'm going to go ahead and share with you a name that is well known in the potential beginning stages of reversing its downtrend. And this is Microsoft. You can see the stock had a sharp advance that began in after reporting their second quarter earnings. And this pullback here that has taken shape over the last six weeks is all about the company reporting weak earnings in their Azure cloud computing uh, division. But let's take a look at what is shaping up here more recently. The stock has at the very least stemmed its losses and is in the throes of forming the right side of a base. I'll share a couple of other characteristics here. And again, an ideal candidate for your watch list. We can see the momentum shift here with that RSI now in positive territory, trending upward. And likewise with the MACD, we already had that black line up through the red, signaling the beginning stages of this new uptrend. We will want to see the stock get up above this 50-day simple moving average and a bit more volume. You want to use historical precedence. Go back to this mid-March period, nice high volume, break above the moving averages, and positive momentum with that RSI and MACD. Another name that we can take a look at here that is also in the beginning stages of turning, and that is PEN. This is a diabetes-related stock. And we can see that it really got into an oversold position with that RSI down below 30. The stock is in the throes of reversing this downtrend. It's nice high volume here as it advances above this key 50 day simple moving average and that MACD now entering into positive territory. One other name that is also reversing its downtrend. This is MTN Vale Resorts. And take a look, this gap up here, super high volume and a continuation rally here. A lot of price target upgrades. I'm going to take a look at a weekly here because the stock overall of note here to me is the fact that it is quite volatile. So it's not going to have as much allure for me as a Microsoft. Now, let's take a look at another company, and this is indicative of stocks that have really fallen out of bed during this earnings season. And this is Chipotle CMG. This is a gap down after their same store sales numbers came in below estimates. And we can see the stock has been struggling, but more recently, a shift in that momentum. So certainly noteworthy one for your watch list. Take a look at this black line up through the red indicating this uptrend. We will want to get up above this 50 day simple moving average and get a bit more in the way of volume. Another name here, this also faltered during earnings season and that is FTNT. Let's take a look here. And this is a software stock, Fortinet, really got clobbered after releasing their quarterly earnings, but more recently here in the throes of the beginning stages of reversing its downtrend up above that 200 day simple moving average. Take a look at that momentum shift into that upward period here. RSI now trending higher. I'm gonna share with you a name that experienced a similar sell-off the after their first quarter earnings. Oh, actually, this is more recent. This is Datadog, DDOG, also a software stock. And you can see that gap down. It is not looking particularly inviting, similar to some of these other names. Last up here, let's take a look at PCAR, that's Packer. And here we are. This is a company that is had hit a new high in price here at the end of July. And it is in the, again, the very beginning stages of potentially reversing that downtrend. We will want to get up above that 50 day, get that momentum up here into positive territory. Now let's take a look at some of these names. I talked about software really coming through this quarter with their earnings. And here we are with APPN, a little bit of a smaller name, but they did come out with nice numbers. And you can see it is on the cusp of this base breakout at about 54. But of note to me is that this shift into positive territory for that MACD is just 
starting. So that is good news as it relates to potential upside. If we go back to this particular period, now, of course, this was a different period for the broader markets, but of note that it is very much in the beginning stages of shifting with that momentum. CRM came out with numbers. This is Salesforce, a well-known company, and we can take a look at the stock relative to historical precedent because it did pull back here again and more recently has entered into positive territory back above that 50-day simple moving average with positive momentum. Now, from here, we can take a look at Berkshire Hathaway. This is another company that had a nice gap up on earnings and then pulled back with the broader markets. This week, it is on the cusp of a base breakout. We can see that shift here in momentum and then nice high volume on its recent advance. So if we want to take a look at some of these names that have broken out of bases and are really outperforming, first up here is Intel and we can see this advance. The company did come out with news last week that they received a very big prepayment for several orders that has boosted their bottom line. And they had other good news as well that helped propel the stock into this nice uptrend. I did want to share with you a couple of energy names that are looking interesting here. This is Occidental, O-X-Y, and take a look. This is that advance. Now, the one thing of concern to me is that it really did not participate with the group so much this week, but it did have these gaps up on high volume. And when you see that take shape, you will want to add an overlay. I have a five-day simple moving average. That is this blue line. And pullbacks to that five-day do become ideal buy points when a stock enters into an uptrend. One other name that we can take a look at in that energy space is HP. And let's take a look because this is another very interesting stock to me because that momentum shift. Now we did get that RSI shaping up in the beginning of this week, but here more recently that MACD black line up through the red on high volume, the stock did experience a brief breakout, but pulled back but certainly very, very compelling looking from here. For me, I'm going to dig down and take a look at those fundamentals as a potential driver. There also were some names, actually, what I did want to do because the Dow last week relatively outperformed. So I wanted to share with you the underlying components within the Dow and share with you where that strength relative is emanating from. Now, we did take a look at Intel, but there is another bellwether old school tech name that is up here at the forefront, and that's IBM. The stock is, this is a daily price chart. It's certainly a little bit overbought at this point in time, but this MACD is still in a middling area, certainly relative to this sharp advance from last year. That's up there. Also, I did want to share with you the energy names, Chevron, Exxon, of course, helping this industry group. But let's take a look at Walmart. The stock hit a new high in price last week. And here we are with this. I'm going to pull up a weekly price chart here. You can see it has been a bit of a wobbly ride. I shared with you XRT, the retailers. It's not a very orderly uptrend, but certainly when you see a bellwether name such as Walmart hitting a new high, it does give pause. And I will tell you, the company is doing a lot right. They are automating their uh, distribution centers, a lot of ways robotic and other air factors that are helping the stock really attract attention. Let's take a look at 3M because what I did want to share with you here is the stock had a gap up. This was in response to earnings, was not able to retain that. Here we are again with a secondary gap up attempt at reversing. And this 200 day is proving to be a very formidable opponent. But what I did want to do is share with you from here what a successful downtrend reversal looks like. Here we are with Caterpillar, C-A-T. This is that pronounced move above these moving averages, high volume, nice move into positive territory with those momentum indicators, and the stock is really holding in 
quite nicely. Last up, one other name I did want to share with you that is on the move, and that is Amgen. So I'm just going to take a minute here and mark this chart up. And we can see it is certainly in the beginning stages of potentially forming what is called a cup with handle base breakout. Certainly not the loveliest of charts, but for those of you not familiar with that cup with handle formation and what it looks like or what to be on the lookout for, I did want to share with you some of those characteristics. And first up is the fact that the stock hits a near-term high, pulls back, has a rally that takes it up, you want it to be less than two thirds below this peak here in price. And then from here, as it relates to that cup brace, uh, breakout, what to be on the lookout for, you want the stock, it has the secondary pullback. And as it advances above its recent high at about 265, that would qualify as a cup with handle base breakout. And I am going to leave it there, guys. I hope you have a fantastic weekend. Get that watch list ready, and I'll share with you where we are next week, same time.